Justine Emma. I am a visual artist and my work is around our existences and technology. I create displays, installations with different medias where I can use artificial intelligence, robotics, machine learnings, but also organic life. And I like to work with many different situations and people such as scientists, anthropologists. During this residence at the ZKM Earth Lab, I was working on my project Supraorganism, which is an installation made of robotic glasses, sculptures, animated by a machine learning system trained on the behaviors of a bees community. So I worked by collecting some data in a honeybees hives. The bees always had been an inspiration for the thinkers. They are the guardians of the balance between the earth and the sky. And I wanted to create a display to see how we can learn from them. The bees are very fascinating animals because they have a way to communicate by their dance, their behaviors, and they are always facing the sun to give a direction and they self-communicate between each other to give information. So they are a great metaphor of what we could also think as a brain. The hive could be a brain and the bees could be the neurons. So by trying to learn something from them, we can also learn from ourselves and from the uh, natural system and how the world is all connected. For this project, I used the machine learning system. We trained it with uh, Martial Joff Roulant during the residence at ZKM on the footage I got from the bees hives. So first, I had to create my own data set. And as an artist, it's fascinating because I'm using uh, very different techniques with, which sometimes are not very uh, scientifically accurate. But uh, by using the videos and the tracking and the positions of bees, we could uh, track different IDs and calculate things. And from those uh, positions, IDs and motions, uh, we are able to make also predictions. So from the data set I collected in the bees community, we were able to calculate the IDs, the positions, the speed, and to generate models. With these models, we were able to create a behavior for the installation. So all the challenge was to embody um, the software in the glass. When I started to work with artificial intelligence, I was very moved by the fact that we can see the machine learning. And from this learning, uh, I felt like it was like a newborn, like the machine was able to see the environment or from a data set or from all the input you can uh, feed it. And from this input, the machine was interpreting and making its own behavior. And I felt it was magic to see kind of new form of life, uh, learning and interpreting something and have a different vision of the world. So in my installations, I always try to make this feeling uh, sensitive and visible for the viewers. So in this installation, I hope they will feel like how the machine is getting the sense of the environment and slightly reacting to them. But at the same time, I really want the audience to understand the process behind it. I wanted the sculpture to generate a sound and the sound is based on the tracking of the bees. So we calculated uh, the IDs of the bees, the positions, and from those positions we were able to determine the speed. And to embody the speed into the glass generates a motion of the motors which uh, percute the glass. 
And the glass is a very interesting material related to sound. I was very interested about this uh, glass harmonica created by uh, Benjamin Franklin. The glass harmonica was this instrument with a uh, glass turning and making this very, very high tone. And it was considered from the government in Germany that something which could um, have a very strong effect on people's brain. So I thought there was a relation between glass sound and uh, psychological uh, level. During this project, I met a lot of people, especially anthropologists specialized in glass, and they told me that the Gauls were using the glass to warn their presence. Uh, when they were walking, they had these uh, tiny pieces of glass which were allowing people like to imagine that they were coming. And so this relation between the glass and imagination is very important in my project. I worked on the sound, of course, but also on the shape. The shape is very undefined. I wanted to use the glass for this uh, particularity of being super organic material that we can fold, we can crack, we can use the bubbles to generate images. I think uh, the nature is uh, everything which is around us. Like even when you create a robot, it's part of the nature. By using blown glass, I really felt I was blowing life into some strange characters or some strange animals. I like the idea of the embodiment. I like the idea of objects becoming alive. And it was a very intense challenge to start from something which is a natural behavior and to embody it into a robotic system. And I like in my work to allow those machines and those systems to be unpredictable, to be what they want to be, just by their presence and their existence, they can maybe inspire us or we can also learn things from them. So for me, artificial intelligence is a kind of new form of life, new proposal, which can open our minds to think about our society. The superorganism is an entity made of different individuals which are a group together. And it can refer to bacteria, insects, such as bees or ants. But I like the fact that it's also a good metaphor to project imaginations. <laughs>